Welcome to yesterday's NBA news from the 28th of July. This time I actually even put the date uh, before the video. <laughs> so uh, let's get into it. We had some rumors and obviously Olympics Day 2 Team USA played, which we'll talk about in depth in a way. Uh, and le let's get into it. So the Cavaliers and the Brooklyn Nets are discussing a sign and trade. Uh, the reports suggest that it would be Isaac Okoro for Dorian Finney-Smith, which would be, I guess, an upgrade for Cleveland. Uh, I'm a little high on Isaac Okoro, but Dorian Finney-Smith obviously gives you the defensive uh, prowess he does and maybe a more uh, intriguing three-point you know, shooting and overall offensive game. And of course gives you a bigger size, I'm pretty sure he's much bigger than Isaac Okoro. So that would be an intriguing move for both sides. The Nets would get a young guy while the Cavaliers would be going all in, right? Um, and we all expect Dorian Finney-Smith and Cam Johnson to be traded eventually. The Cavaliers are apparently also expressing interest in Cam Johnson himself. So, I mean, that would be a good trade for the Cavaliers if they would be able to pull it off to get one of these guys for their team. Uh, it would certainly improve their roster, uh, especially... Cam Johnson, I would like that for them. Defensively, he's no Isaac Okoro, obviously, but uh, as an all-around player, he's really good. Uh, now let's get into our hydration break. I drink your water, kids. And uh, adults and everyone. <laughs> anyway, uh, Utah is a team to monitor for Brandon Ingram, apparently, according to rumors. Uh, which would mean that they would resign Lauri Markkanen, which we've talked about in depth. I'm pretty sure it's a week from now where, or about a week or 10 days from now where the Utah Jazz have to make a decision if they will extend him or not. And they would then trade for Brandon Ingram for a win now situation, which just sounds not Danny Ainge like, but maybe, maybe, maybe that could work. And the last rumor is that Blazers, the Portland Trailblazers, want two first rounders for Jeremy Grant. Uh, apparently, the price obviously is not, you know, nobody wants to do that. And the Lakers are the team to keep an eye on him. I'm pretty sure Zach Lowe, uh, one of the reputable guys, uh, said, you know, that you can pre order Grant, jersey, Grant Lakers jerseys. So we'll see if that will come to fruition. And the last news from the NBA is that Vitaly Popen Potapenko is a new Detroit Pistons assistant coach. He was previously working with Memphis and Cleveland, played for four NBA teams. So that's a good hire for Detroit. I'm intrigued by Detroit. Um, of course, they're probably not going to be anything special, but I think we should see some noticeable improvements with Detroit's play this season. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. Anyway, Olympics Day 2, we had the men's and women's tournament, obviously, women's tournament starting, the men's tournament uh, continuing, obviously, uh, South Sudan played Puerto Rico, they beat them 90 to 79, uh, and it was a really good, entertaining, high energy game, uh, first of all, Puerto Rico came off you know, started off really hot from the three-point line. They also played, I would say, with much more energy. They played much faster, which uh, led to some really bad miscommunication from South Sudan. And they were making some incredible shots also, right? Because Alvarado was hitting everything. Uh, Waters was hitting everything. And uh, Puerto Rico was off to a huge, great start. But South Sudan, obviously, with their length and size, dominated the rebounding. And they kept themselves in the game. And then Jose Alvarado uh, hurt his ankle or just had a bad, uh, had an injury, had to be carried off the floor. It looked like he was really, you know, in much, in huge pain and was crying even, uh, which just made me fucking sad because he was absolutely incredible. He had like 19 points in the first half alone and was just playing out of his mind. And then obviously he got hurt and he did come back into the game eventually, like three minutes in to the third quarter, but he didn't look the same, obviously. And that was where South Sudan just took control. They were able to finally hit more three-pointers in the second half. They continued to play hard and obviously with the size, they out-rebounded Puerto Rico by a lot. Carling Jones did his thing. He had like 19.6 rebounds, 7 assists. And South Sudan gets their first win in the history of their country, which is like, what is it? They said 11 years old, maybe 13 years old. Around that span, which is crazy, right? But they have some really good talents. They have some really good NBA players. I mean, NBA players. They have some NBA players, right? Invenian Gabriel, for example. 
So, uh, South Sudan salute, man. And some incredible performance of the bench. I absolutely love the name Sunday Dech, uh, because Dech in in uh, Ch Czech, Czech language means breathe or breathing, uh, which is fucking awesome. So just such a cool name. Sunday Dech just made me happy. Uh, Dang had his moments from the, from the foul line, and I'm... I should have written those names down. I don't remember the names of these guys. I think one of these was Knox or not Kevin Knox, like Knock or something like that. But that sounds disrespectful to say it like that because they played their ass, ass off and they shot lights out from the three point line, had incredible moment to moments. And South Sudan gets their first win in history, as I predicted yesterday. So we're continuing our 100% accurate predictions, even though Jose Alvarado, uh, if he didn't get injured, we would be talking maybe a little differently. But he unfortunately did and that's just how it played out now into onto the us usa beats serbia 110-84 the first stat that jumps out obviously Jokic was uh, a plus minus of zero so whenever he was on the floor the serbians uh, stood a chance and whenever he was not the serbians did not stand a chance which i mean nothing surprising about that he continued to really embarrass and beat who had a really weird game once again and continues to just be unlikable uh, but it was Kevin Durant's return right Kevin Durant's uh, return and he is the best FIBA player ever like truly best FIBA player ever he he this setting for him right where he has all these guys around him and with this ball and with this hoop and with these rules KD is just the best scorer in there and he, it just fits his style and fits his personality all the way through with Team USA. Best FIBA player ever and he, he's just incredible whenever he comes around. That first half was spiritual experience from him and an incredible return even though he was not 100% fit. LeBron did his thing, he was incredible, he was pumped. And Serbians, three major flaws, right? Serbia, uh, Serbia's way to beat the US would be first of all three-point shooting which the us dominated they were they shot incredible and the serbians could not uh which means they they did not win the three-point shooting battle then turnover battle while lebron was careless uh the serbians were careless as well and they their turnovers led to way more transition buckets so uh that was another uh another way where they lost the battle and obviously rebounding, which I don't know how that worked, but uh, it didn't matter since they lost turnover battle and the three-point shooting battle by a landslide. And th hey, they, they're lacking one more uh, shot creator because Juru Holiday locked Bojan Bogdan Bogdanovic absolutely down. And they're lacking one more shot creator scorer on a NBA level essentially against the US, I would say. They need one more Bogdan Bogdanovic in a way and they have a lot of heart they play hard Jokic is still incredible but they would need to have a really hot shooting night from the three point which can happen don't get me wrong right but it just didn't happen today and defensively they stood no chance uh pick and roll coverage was rough they had nobody to stop anyone at the paint which obviously lebron just destroyed them with their size and length and strength the us just looked way more athletic obviously out there and even at the three-point line, they had a really rough time shooting. A lot of miscommunications around Steph Curry. And, I mean, what can you do? This USA team is incredible. And they played like it finally today. Uh, some scarce in the first half once again. But it pretty much uh, played out a lot of the same ideas that happened. Or a lot of the same ways that it happened in the first uh, exhibition game these two played. And we'll see if they meet each other again in this tournament. Uh, maybe Serbia can have a hot shooting night there and give you us more trouble. But you would also maybe just need uh, the four way US just completely cold. Uh, which would mean they would have a lot of turnovers, they would play with not much energy, and they would not be making their three pointers. But they play with energy, they were making their three pointers, and the turnovers didn't matter because the Serbians gave it much, much of the time back to the US or even more to the US. So. Uh, it was a fun game, uh, just at the end of the day, as one-sided as a lot of people probably thought it would be. Um, then the women's tourney had, a, had two intriguing games. Spain beat China 90-89. Uh, there were incredible performances there. Uh, and 
it was after the overtime. Uh, I did not watch because I was watching tennis because uh, our favorite uh, for the tennis tournament played with one of the most annoying tennis players there is and that match lasted three hours so I was solely focused on that and on Simon Biles and uh, there were other Czech, Czech players also playing so I, I was just completely preoccupied by that and then Serbia beat Puerto Rico I was also watching unfortunately Czech uh, unfortunately because obviously you know national pride at the end of the day so i'm sorry that i will not give you much about the women's tourney uh as of right now but uh we'll see uh, maybe today i'll catch more even though i have uh things to do with my one of my friends i'm meeting up with him and that is of course a lot of a uh, lot of uh what is it um a lot of czech people once again uh playing in the olympics so uh i'll at least for sure try to watch uh I want to see some Canada, France, some USA, Japan, but we'll see how that works. Which leads us to today's slate, all, all women games, uh, which means Nigeria against Australia first. From what I've seen, I would, I'm would i leaning Australia from what I've seen from the bookmakers, but I obviously don't, uh, I am not that well versed in that. Germany against Belgium, I think Belgium is going to win because they have been the best team in, the, in Europe. They are uh, European champions. They had a close game in the Olympic qualifiers with US. And uh, while Germany has some really good talent from the WNBA, Belgium has a lot of chemistry. They have the best, some of the best Euro players. Uh, they have one of the, I would say, big, biggest players right in the in the league in Emma Meesum. Uh, oh shit! Uh, I probably pronounced it right, but uh, in Emma. <laughs> uh, so I'm going Belgium, but I think this could be a closer matchup if uh, Satu Sabal is truly healthy to play. Canada, France. I'm going France, the home 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 team. Uh, obviously, Johannes. Hopefully, I said that right. Is the headliner for France, while Canada has an Alia Edwards and Kia Nurse, for example, from the WNBA. Uh, France has way more chemistry, better Europe, Euro players, right? So uh, I would say I'm going France at home and USA obviously should be Japan. There's no uh, talk about that. And as for yesterday's picks, we went once again 4-0, right? Uh, predicted everything well. We'll see how it goes with the women's tournament where I'm really not well versed. But if I'm going to go favorites, right? Uh, <laughs> maybe I'll just win every game uh, because I can't predict upsets but I mean even Serbia had a really rough time with Puerto Rico China really gave, gave it to Spain but I mean that was a little expected with the Spain China game uh, because of the talent that both teams possess while I would say the Puerto Rican uh, giving Serbia that much trouble wasn't as expected and I mean th that fourth quarter was like three three points for Serbia in the fourth while Puerto Rico scored 19 so that that was a crazy crazy quarter at the end of the day so uh, those are my thoughts, those are my uh, reports, and we'll be back tomorrow with uh, to talk about the women's slate, which might not be in depth because I don't know how much I'll catch, and obviously with more NBA news, preview for next Olympic Games, because the men's obviously will be playing in two days, and that's that. Thank you all for listening, thank you all for watching, and as always, be kind to yourself and to others, be gentle with yourselves, and I'll catch you all tomorrow. Uh, just be.